using Google Chrome, uh, especially in education, and how it's different from other browsers. So when you first open Chrome after you get it installed, it's going to look something like this, and it looks very bare, kind of, in comparison to some other browsers you might have used. So let's sort of, in this first first part of the series, explore a little bit about Chrome, um, especially when it comes to tabs, which are these things right up here in the top left, and when it comes to bookmarks, which right now look like they don't exist. So let's start off with logging into Chrome. So you can see when I come to this front page, I have my search bar right here, including voice search, and I have the ability to sign in. Now signing into Chrome is really important because that's going to allow it to retain all of the settings that we set up today. So make sure that you sign in. And if you're working for a school district and you're using a Google Apps for Education account, um, just think about whether you want to sign in with your school district account. Um, giving your school district access to your search history, anything that you might um, use Chrome for, or whether you want to sign in with your personal account, um, where you would own that history and um, you would be subject to different agreements with Google than your school district account. So just take that into consideration when you sign in. Now as for me, I like to sign in with multiple different accounts. We'll go over that in a later series, but I like to have lots of different accounts so I can switch around depending on what I'm looking at. But we'll look at that later. So for today, I'm going to sign in to an account that I have purposefully made blank for you so that we can go through exploring it together. So I'm just going to sign in to my fried technology at Gmail account and um, then we'll get going. So if you get the notification to connect your mobile number like I just did, you should definitely do that. Um, because if you ever do lose your password or your account is compromised, you're really going to need that to be set up. So you can see now I'm signed in. If you have a picture associated with the Google Plus account, then you'll see that in the top right hand corner. And you'll also know you're signed in because when you go to these three lines in the top right, uh, we're going to call those hot dogs throughout this training session. Uh, my friend Ann says that they're pancakes. She's a vegetarian, so you can take your pick. But in my trainings, I usually call them hot dogs. It helps people remember. Um, you'll see that I'm signed in and you'll see the account that I'm signed in as. So if you ever want to check and see if you're signed in, there's where you can look right there. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to show our bookmarks bar. So this is how you can do that. You can go to your hot dogs and then click on bookmarks and slide over and choose show bookmarks bar. So that's going to reveal this bar like you're probably used to seeing in other browsers you've used and it's going to give you the ability to import bookmarks from another browser you may have installed on this computer. But for our purposes today we're just going to start off with making new bookmarks. So let's just pretend that we want to bookmark uh, friedtechnology.com because of course everybody wants to bookmark that. So I'm going to navigate to my blog and we're going to use this as our first bookmark. So here's one way to bookmark. I can just click the star up there. You can see it's going to go default to the bookmarks bar, which is this bar right here, and I can click done. So now I see the little favicon, and I see that this is a bookmark for Fried Technology, and if I'm not at Fried Technology and I want to go there, I can just click it, and then I'll go right to Fried Technology. Now let's look at some other ways to create a bookmark. Another really great bookmark um, to put in if you're an educator is free tech for teachers. Um, really great site. I learn about all kinds of new um, new tools through here and uh, Richard does a great job keeping this updated. So let's learn another way to bookmark with free tech for teachers. What I'm going to do is take the little icon that's to the left of the web address in the Omni box. That's what we call this long white box. Omni because that means everything and you can do everything right from this box, like search for example. So I'm going to take this little piece of paper icon right here, and let me try that again, and I'm going to drag it down to my bookmarks bar. Now I'm kind of having trouble on that one, and that there's a good case in point for why we need more than one way to bookmark, because we may not be able to bookmark that site using this method because I get all these pop downs. So let me try it with this one. 
So I'm going to try it with my blog and you see how I can just drag it down. Now I'm not sure why that didn't work with Richard's site, but um, let me delete this one. I just right clicked on it and now we'll go use the other technique to bookmark Richard's site. So there we go. We can hit the star, free technology for teachers, done, and now there is Richard's blog also bookmarked in my bookmarks bar. Now what if we want to have a folder here so that everything is not just right out on our bookmarks bar. So in the browser that I use every day, which I'll flip to right now, you can see I have a lot of folders set up for all kinds of different things I'm working on, or this is for my work account, all the different sites I use for my job. So um, I can also create a folder in this blank browser like this. I can right click and choose add folder and I can type in a new folder name. So I'll call this uh, work and click add and now I can move this folder around and I can start to organize and arrange these bookmarks. Now one more little tip I want to show you comes from my main account I'm using over here and you'll see that I've got lots of little bookmarks that are just the favicons and they don't have any words. I love this tip. I got it from Karen Justel in Spring Branch ISD and um, it's a great one. So let's say we want to bookmark Twitter. Hopefully you're on Twitter. Tons of great educational stuff going on there and let's make a bookmark to Twitter and use just the icon to do that. All right, so here I am. I logged into my Twitter account and now I'm going to bookmark it. So this time what I'm going to do when I hit the star is I'm going to delete the text that's in the name field. First, let me show you what it looks like when I don't delete the text. So you can see it's got the little Twitter bird and then it's got the word Twitter. But now let's try that again. So I can edit that bookmark and delete the name and click save and now I've just got the little bird. Well really I don't need it to say Twitter out to the side because when I see that little blue bird I know exactly what site it is and many sites work the same way. So you can see uh, some of these are very recognizable um, and you probably know what they are without me even telling you. So there we are. There are some things about working with bookmarks. Now if you want to get more advanced with bookmarks you can always go over to your hot dogs and you can go to your bookmarks and then bookmark manager. Let me move over a little bit more so you can see that. Bookmarks and bookmark manager. Now this is going to give you full access to everything in your bookmarks and let you do things like you know multiple select or move things around. Um, you can create folders through here. You can do everything you need to do. Reorder by title, import, export, whatever you need to do. So there's the bookmark manager. So I'm also going to talk to you about tabs today in this introductory lesson and um, I know that you've probably been noticing that I've been working with tabs up here at the top of my browser. I've got multiple different things open and I'm showing you now how I can move these tabs around. I also want to show you how I can create pin tabs. Now pin tabs, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be there when I open my browser back up again, although I could set it up like that. But what it means is some of my tabs are going to be little and stuck over to the left like you see in this, my main browser, and some of them are going to be big and over to the right and they don't, uh, they don't mix with each other. So I can't take a big tab and move it over into my little tabs, but I can organize these little tabs amongst themselves and have what I, how I use it is I have kind of my default stuff open there on the left hand side. So let's go and open Gmail and let's set that up as a little tab. So there's lots of different ways to get to Gmail in the Chrome browser. One way is just to type in gmail.com and that'll take us there. And now I've got Gmail open in this tab and I can right click the tab and choose pin tab. Now you see what just happened. It just flew over to the left hand side and so there's a little tab. Now let's say I also want to have my calendar open. I'm going to use my app chooser. Oh, and look at that. I can drag and drop now to rearrange these things. So I'm going to put my calendar up at the top. So I'm going to click on my calendar now. And now I can pin that tab also. And I can have a couple of pin tabs over to the left. Now let's look at what happens if I've got, you know, sometimes I do this, I end up getting like 25 different things open and, you know, I go and I click and click and click and pretty soon, you know, like I don't even know where I am anymore in my browser because I've got so much stuff open. So if that happens to you and you've got 
tons of stuff open and you're ready to start over again, then what you can do is right click on one of your pin tabs and do close other tabs. Really that'll work on anything. So let's say the only thing I wanted to keep open was Twitter. Let's see what happens. I'll right click on it and choose close other tabs. Well look what happened. All my other big tabs closed, but my little tabs are still open. So let's look at what happens if I have um, let's say I have CNN open and I've got um, a Google Doc open here and I've got Google Plus open right here and I want to close I want to close Twitter this presentation and these photos so what I can do is move Twitter over here and then I can right click on CNN and do close other tabs and you know what's going to happen everything else besides CNN is going to close. Look at this other option. I've also got close tabs to the right. So if I want, I can reorder these things and then close just the ones I want. So I want you to notice too, if you accidentally close a tab, thanks to Jessica Powell for showing me this. I couldn't believe I never noticed it before. And um, she did it one day in front of me. I'm like, wait, do that again. So there it is. Reopen close tabs and then you can keep on clicking on that to reopen them in the order that they have just closed. So there you go and you can go back and find that mysterious tab that you knew you had open just a minute ago but it now appears to be gone. So there are just a few things getting started with Google Chrome. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please leave me a comment and let me know. If there are specific things about Chrome that you want me to cover in this series, then let me know and uh, I may do that one next and uh, hopefully in the next couple of months, we'll have a whole series of Google Chrome videos for you. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.